Welcome to Salem. We're glad you are joining us today on this beautiful Easter Sunday. This is a great day to worship together and seek God and everything he has for us this Sunday. Let us remember that today the tomb was empty, that Jesus, who was beaten, whipped, and nailed to a cross, is alive. He conquered the grave, and through him we are alive again. We are excited about what God has in store for us today for this Easter Sunday. The church might be empty, but here's the thing. So was the grave. Hallelujah. I'm so excited for this beautiful day, and thank you for joining us here online. As we begin to worship today, let us remember that the grave is empty, that our Savior lives, and that God is in control. Let's seek the peace of God, the hope of Jesus, and the message God has for us this week. We are so excited for this day and the message of hope we have in Jesus. Now let's prepare our hearts for worship. died 
but could they keep him in the grave? They could not, they could not. Praise God, they could not. And when at last they took from him what willingly he gave, could they keep him in the grave? Could they keep him in the grave? Could they keep him in the grave? They could not. Welcome, friends, to Easter 2020 at Salem United Methodist Church. We're glad that you're gathering with us today uh, online. Um, we're celebrating Easter. Some of us are celebrating at home. I'm celebrating here in a pretty much empty church. Unfortunately, some folk are celebrating in a sick bed, and some people are celebrating in a hospital room. But the good news is that Jesus has resurrected. He is still alive. 
And for that, we can be so grateful. Again, I want to thank David and all the others that have helped make this service possible here this morning. Easter is always a beautiful time. Every Sunday that we gather should be a little Easter because Christ is always among us. I'm going to read this morning uh, a familiar passage of Scripture from John chapter 20, the first 18 verses. Most of you know it well. Hopefully uh, today I might put a little different spin on it. Hear these words now from the evangelist. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as of yet they had not understood the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading and our hearing of his holy word. Let us pray. Oh God, this is the most high and holy day of the year. This is the day, God, when we come once again and we remember why it is we have true life. Why it is, oh God, that we have life not only now, but because of Jesus Christ, we have life that goes on forever. We're thankful, God, that you have allowed this to happen. We're thankful, God, that you have placed us in this place here this morning that we might honor you, glorify you, and lift up the name of Jesus. Lord, help us today to Turn Jesus loose in our life. Help us today to turn Jesus loose in the lives of others. We'll give you the praise and honor and glory. For we pray.
pray this prayer in the resurrected name of Christ. Amen. Some folks call them fireflies. However, when I was growing up, we called them lightning bugs. We couldn't wait for a spring or summer evening to go outside and we'd see the lightning bugs and they would be brightening up, brightening up the sky. And I'd run to my mama's cabinet and I'd pull out an old mason jar about this high, punch holes in the jar, and we'd scurry around outside around the house and we would reach and grab for those lightning bugs. And we were, couldn't wait to get those lightning bugs placed inside the jar. We had captured them. We wanted to hold on to them. The truth is, we really didn't conquer anything by placing those lightning bugs in that mason jar. Because in a few minutes or maybe an hour, they'd die. We couldn't control them. We couldn't hold on to them. The truth is that Easter helps us to understand that we cannot hold on to Jesus. For thousands of years we've listened to this great Easter message that claims that we got to turn Jesus loose. One of Jesus' favorite words, if you recall, was the word go. Go and sin no more. Go and do likewise. Go and tell a friend and neighbor just how good things are since you have met me. Jesus could never be accused of laziness. He was an on-the-go kind of person. If you think about it, Jesus would never stay at home cooped up all by himself. The Bible tells us that even when he was 12 years old, he scampered around and got away from his mom and dad and was then found in the church just mulling around and praying. He couldn't be held in one place. I imagine that Jesus would have had a difficult time sheltering in place now. Jesus would have had a hard time with physical distancing because he was the kind of fellow that wanted to get out. I can see Jesus now playing on a hillside. I can see Jesus now walking out in a desert land. I can see Jesus now as he walks along a shoreline and wades in the water. A person on the go. Today we celebrate another Easter because Jesus could not be contained. This wonderful Savior of ours is all-powerful. He cannot be stereotyped. This wonderful Savior of ours cannot be put into a box. No one knew this better than one of his best disciples, Mary Magdalene. The story takes place and Mary walks in haste on Easter morning to Jesus' tomb. Luke says that she carried fragrances to anoint his body. But I also believe that Mary came with a loving heart. Mary came to check on this wonderful Savior that she had recognized and had lived among her. I mean, think about it. Mary... Jesus performed miracle after miracle in Mary's life. She was not, not always the best kind of person. Her faith was not always the best it could be, but with, the, with Christ in her life, her faith became tremendous. She became a devoted disciple. So on this Easter morning, I believe that Mary had an encounter like no one has ever experienced I imagine that she was one of those same people who on Palm Passion Sunday lined the streets and shouted, Hosanna, save us. 
Mary, we know, was certainly a person who was present at Jesus' crucifixion. And now I imagine this picture has been painted in her mind as she remembers Jesus being carried away and placed into a tomb. And in her weeping state, Mary stands outside that hewn out tomb. Like any of us, she wanted to investigate. So she bent over and started to look inside that hallow place. No doubt she witnessed the surprise of her life. As she looked into the tomb, two angels were sitting there. They were sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying and the angels said to her, Why are you crying? And suddenly Mary turned around and met again that Lord and Master. And when Jesus called her name, there's something about it, dear friends, when Christ calls our name. He may be calling your name today to go into some type of Christian ministry. He may be calling your name today to have a closer walk with Him. He may be calling the name of one of your family members who've digressed and fallen away from the faith. He might be calling, but when Jesus calls our name, things really happen and we really recognize Him and we understand just who He is. We do know this when Jesus called Mary's name. She threw her arms around him. I can imagine Mary thinking, now, I don't know if this is a dream. I don't know if I'm awake or not. I don't know if it's real or not. But either way, I got you now. I got you now where I want you, and I'm not letting you go this time. And if I didn't know that Jesus was not only divine, but also human, I might think he's crazy. I mean, here's Mary holding on to Jesus with that great amount of love in her life, holding on, and here he was just a day earlier with his hands nailed in hate to a cross. And I'm wondering to myself, just what we're both thinking. But then, friends, in this text, there's a turning point in this text. And I believe this is the turning point of today's great lesson. As Mary clings to that resurrected life of her Savior, Jesus speaks a powerful word in verse 17 of this text. He says, don't hold on to me. Don't hold on to me because I have more good news to spread around the world. And he says to Mary, you don't hold on to me because you have more good news. You've got to become, continue to become a disciple that lives and breathes and shares this good news. You've got to turn me loose because I must ascend to the Father. And then Jesus speaks, and then he speaks that two-letter word that is really the gospel in a nutshell, if you will, to me. He speaks that two-letter word to Mary. He says, now go. Now it's time to go. You go now and tell everybody you see. You go now and tell everybody you find that you've seen the Lord. He is alive and there's living proof among us. You go now, Mary. You go now, Mary, because I live. You go. A few moments ago, Jeremy sang here in the church, Because He Lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. There's a good story behind that song. Bill and Gloria Gaither, back in the 60s, put that song together. Gloria would write the words and Bill would write the music. Things were not going really well in their life at that time. There was a lot of unrest, kind of like it is now. Back in the 60s, we were going through civil rights movements, racism, God is dead kind of situation. 
Then all of a sudden, Gloria Gaither became pregnant. Day after day, she wondered just what is it going to be like to bring this little baby into the world in this chaos, in this time. One day, Bill and Gloria and Bill's father, George, were walking across the parking lot to the little A-frame office that they worked in. And George Gaither stopped Bill and Gloria and said, I want you to take a look at something here. And he pointed down to the sidewalk. And right there in the middle of that sidewalk was one tiny blade of green grass that had busted through that sidewalk. That blade of green grass had come through the dirt. It had come through the concrete. And now there it was receiving that wonderful sunlight. And Gloria Gaither began to think if God in all his creation can do something that great. If God can bring out that little blade of grass, how much more will he look after us? And she wrote, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, I know he holds the future. Life, dear friends, is worth the living just because he lives. Friends of mine, people at Salem, folks around the world, do you believe this? Will you turn Jesus loose in your life? and in the lives of your friends and neighbors. If you do, you'll never be the same. You will never be the same. In the name of the Father and the Son and Holy Spirit.